The process of backtesting and optimizing a trading strategy is a complex one. It requires a lot more consideration and planning than simply loading up your algo into a backtesting tool and clicking the start button. Today, I go through what I consider to be the most important aspects of this process and provide some useful links for you to follow and investigate this fascinating subject in a lot more detail. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here, or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. I've constructed many videos in the past on the subjects of backtesting and strategy optimization. In this video, I intend to cover what I consider to be the most important points, but also provide you with links to additional videos if you wish to pursue any of these subjects in more detail. So let's make a start. So if you've been following this series, you'll know that we've looked at the journey that traders take from the very beginning when they start to investigate trading all the way through to when they're successful traders. But the potential issues around backtesting and optimizations can start to play a part very early on in that cycle. And so for algo traders, overfitting as part of that optimization process is usually a common mistake. Furthermore, for discretionary traders, a different but related subject is that of statistical significance. But pretty quickly, statistical significance also becomes a problem for algorithmic traders often based around inadequate sample size of those optimization processes. So let's now start to look at some of the things that I consider to be most important in terms of making a positive impact on this process. And the first one is when you're trying to identify if a trading strategy has a genuine edge or not. And this is actually a lot harder than many traders think. And this is because backtest results can be extremely deceiving, especially when statistical significance is low. And when this is the case, it means that random chance starts to be more dominant than the meaningful data and the meaningful information you're getting from your backtest. Now, it just so happens that the very first video I put together for DarwinX was on this exact subject. And this was all about determining whether or not the trading system that you're looking at does have that genuine edge or not. So I go into this topic in a lot more detail in the first four videos in the series. And this is a link to the first of those. So if you think you'd benefit from this, you can click on the link now and watch that and the next three episodes. Now, if we look at statistical significance and sample size in a little bit more detail, there are actually several factors that will determine whether your backtesting is significant or not. But I would say by far, the aspect that is the most important is that of sample size. And sample size is a general statistical term for the number of events or items that are being analyzed. And so for you and I, within the context of trading, this is the number of trades that form that backtest. Now, there's a really important relationship here, and that's between what's called the degrees of freedom and the sample size or the number of trades. And again, putting degrees of freedom into the context of an optimization, this is analogous to the number of parameters that we're simultaneously attempting to optimize. The higher 
the degrees of freedom, the higher the sample size needs to be to give you that statistical significance. And this is why many traders who attempt to optimize too many parameters will almost certainly be struggling for any statistical significance and will be doing what's called overfitting. So if you want to dig into this, then you can follow the link here that will explain this relationship in more detail. Now, I mentioned overfitting there. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. As I've said, this is likely to occur when that ratio of the sample size to the degrees of freedom is insufficient to give us statistical significance. And this is a really common problem for certainly novice algo traders. So for more information about why overfitting occurs, which of course leads to a system that does not perform well in a live account, then you can click on this link here. But of course, what traders are most interested in is how do you avoid overfitting? And there are several steps that traders can take in order to improve statistical significance and get much more reliable backtests and optimizations. One of those that I found to be most useful is the use of a multi-symbol strategy. Now, every strategy that I develop is based on a basket of different assets, which I backtest simultaneously. And so, for example, for a currency-based system, that would be on 28 currency pairs. But as I say, there are other techniques as well. And again, for more information, click on the link here. Now, there's another video I've produced in the past, which isn't part of this particular series that I did on backtesting and optimization. It's actually part of a advanced MQL coding technique series. But I thought it was relevant to mention here because I talk about the techniques that are required to code a multi-symbol expert advisor that's capable of trading multiple assets, within both a backtesting scenario, but also in a live trading environment. And so instead of needing to backtest each individual asset separately and to have an EA to trade each of those separately, this is just a single EA that will trade all of the symbols that you require at the same time. And of course, in a backtest scenario, those combined results will have a lot more trades which means your sample size is higher and your statistical significance is therefore better. And what does that result in? Well, it results in a reduced chance of overfitting. So you might be interested in this particular video, but also take a look at the other videos that form part of this series. So there's lots of good techniques there in terms of developing performance metrics to measure the performance score of your trading strategy in a better way configuring the strategy tester in MT5 so that it gives you more reliable results, and so on. So the link here will take you to the multi-symbol video, but you should be able to see all of the other videos in the series down the right-hand side of the YouTube window. Another aspect of backtesting and optimization that in my view is essential is around the design of the walk forward phases. So when you perform an optimization, that's done on data that's classified as in-sample data. And because that's being used to produce the optimal parameter values, it can't actually be trusted in itself to give you reliable results. And so what you need to do is to test out those results by using a walk-forward phase on data that the strategy has never seen before and that's known as out of sample data. And this will provide you with a much more trustworthy indication of whether your strategy has a true edge or not. And again, the link is top right. The next area is the interpretation of optimization profiles. There's definitely a right way and a wrong way to do this in order to identify what the optimal parameters are. And bad choices here mean that you risk your strategy prematurely losing its edge. 
and I go into this in a lot more detail in this video here. Now, a moment ago, when I was talking about the MQL coding series, I mentioned performance metrics. And if you want to learn more about the theory behind these, then I've got a fairly large number of videos that cover different performance metrics, why they work, why others don't maybe give you a good indication of strategy performance. But it's absolutely essential that you use a performance metric that does give you a good quantifiable score to enable you to choose those parameters most effectively. And it's my personal view that there are a number of performance metrics that are far better than others. So this is a link to the first of these videos, but at the end of each video, you'll see a link to the next. So you can watch those in sequence if you wish. So that's a summary of some of the most important aspects of optimizations and backtesting, in my own opinion. And now in the next episode, I'm going to be looking at diversification and risk management. And this will be the final episode of this particular series. But don't worry, following this, there'll be a new series on institutional grade risk management techniques. And believe me, this is one that you don't want to miss. Now, please do remember to give me a like right below and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And now until next time, trade safe.